Let's talk herd. The trust yeah. part is very difficult. That mm. was the hardest part for me is to put aside yeah. all the stigma, all the tools, all of the, well, we've always done it this way. So that's it. And the dressage world I found was the hardest for me mm. in the sense that everything has to look a certain way. Yeah. And the horse, and then we want the quick way to get mm. it. So we use, you know, double bits, yeah. the double reins. There's a lot going on there. How can the horse possibly yes. show you what he's all about? When I teach, I want to see the horse moving as naturally mm. as if there's nothing on his yeah. back. No rider, no nothing. Yeah. Because I believe that's how it should be done. Mm. There are uh, some, I've heard trainers say, well, you know what, it's not even natural to ride a horse in the first place yes. because of the way they're built and this and that. Mm. I've asked the horses. I've asked, is it okay to ride mm. you? Is it okay to get on? Yeah. And the answer I got was, yes, but not the way you're doing mm. it. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted I've to ask. I've asked the you. hard questions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I didn't want to go on, off on a tangent with the, the riding yet, because I wanted to ask you, what do you feel there are people who say that horses are, are in, you know, the way that we keep them, they are dependent on us and they are imprisoned by us. So how do you feel about, about that? Can, you know, I mean, personally, I don't subscribe to that in quite that way because I think there are dimensions and I think they, they have choice on a soul level. And how do you feel about like just having them in our lives in that way? Do you think it's possible that they have choice because we can open the gate and let them have that choice? So I have never kept my horses um, in barns mm -hmm. with blankets, yeah. with shoes. Yeah. Never. Um, my horses like are 23. I've got the two, uh, sisters, Angelica and Athena are 23 and 21 mm. and have never had a bit treat saddle or shoes on their feet. Mm. And they're probably the healthiest horses I've ever met. Mm. I've always let them roam on as much land as was available. I would set up the land in a way that they need to move mm. all day. Mm. They have water, shelter, food. Yeah. Um, the food is not in a net. It's not, uh, it's distributed. So they, they had to walk mm. along the track to feed themselves. So as natural as possible. Yeah. I did it on eight acres. I did it on 40 acres. Mm. They had a choice to go where they wanted. They foraged, they moved all the yeah. time. Um, I learned about, like, I understand people put blankets on their horses when it rains or it's cold mm. or I'm in Canada. So it's, it's common to see that yeah. if yeah. it's, and I ask them because they'll say, well, no, my horse needs a blanket. Mm. And I'm so, okay. Okay. Fair enough. That's your thought. Here's mine. If you put a blanket on a horse and it snows, does the, the snow pile up on the blanket or does it melt mm. off? And it melts off. Why? Where's the heat coming from? Coming from the horse. Okay, so your blanket is squishing mm -hmm. the natural insulation pocket of air yeah, exactly. that they have to keep themselves warm. When I go, when it was very cold, and we get snow, and I'd go check the horses, make sure everyone's all right, I look at their backs. If they have snow on their back, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's just logical, yeah. but they get longer fur. Yep, they do because it's winter and they will have longer, thicker fur to keep. They've been around running this planet for mm. how many thousands of years without us putting blankets and shoes and what have you, right? Absolutely. That's nature. I want to be close to mm. nature. Not to man-made so techniques, which yeah. and if you if if we get close to nature, 
then we learn. Mm. Yes, absolutely. It's so true. And I've been through that same journey with the horses. Some of it was imposed, you know, because of, for example, years ago in Scotland, when we had big herds, we lost our farrier um, because he got too bad at back. And we were some of the first ones to go because we had a lot of youngsters who were difficult. So so we had to just go barefoot and learn, you know, learn to trim. And we learned to trim ourselves because we couldn't afford to have trimmers. And, mm-hmm. and then we, uh, yeah, I think we did have rugs in Scotland. And then we changed, stopped drugging in France when we realized. And when you look back, you understand, like, I, that's part of my, I feel like my uh, awakening is, this judgment that we have for each other, like really, truly letting go of that. Because as you say, it's, it's our own experience, you know? And at the time, if somebody had said to me that I don't need to rug, I mean, they did, they did say that. I remember somebody saying, I actually felt that they were neglecting their horse. And that was my own, it, it came down in the end to my own, pain body my own like fear of 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 the horses not being looked after like it was a really sort of deep thing in me and when I could let that go it became clear that they'd you know that they didn't need this and that it was actually hurting them their their thermodynamic system and exactly so it's all it's all been that kind of you know, see, and, and even recently I had an experience where I, I realized that I was thinking about one or feeling about one horse differently to another, and that was changing the dynamic in the herd. And so it's a, a constant um, self-awakening isn't it? Like, that brings you closer yeah. to them in this, in this amazing way. It is quite magical. It really is, yeah. It really is. Oh, yes. And would you, so did you ever... Yeah, let's go back to this thing of the horses, because a lot of people do who are, I think people who have had a really bad experience with riding sometimes go pretty heavily in the other direction just because they feel really put off. And and it's true that (laughs) probably 99% of the way that we ride is pretty bad for the horse. And, you know, and it's kind of, it's got that blind spot you know about it of the people of the horses being exploited so yeah that did you ever go through a period where you thought that riding was was wrong or you were put off by it or you you left it for a while and worked back to it how did that happen with riding like why is riding a thing um at all so when i started learning all about this technique and developing it. And I realized I had to be on the ground. Yeah. Because once I was on my horse, it was a different relationship. Yeah, absolutely. So the relationship I get, and I see this a lot where people on the ground are, the horses are happy, following them everywhere, <laughs> neighing at the gate when they come. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. And then they tack up and get on and the way they ride, yeah. lose, they lose, they lose all of the trust and the, 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 the comfort oh, in that so relationship is gone because suddenly you're the rider and you're the, st- you've got the steering wheel. Wow. You're the dominant. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure that before I get on, first of all, they were okay with it. That's why I started yeah. with showing them the image of me getting on, yeah. whether they're tacked up. And I'm at the mounting block or whether I'm bareback and I'm on the a rail mm. on, on the fence. I always ask. And I'm always prepared that if they say no, it's no. Mm. Sometimes it's a, uh, as you get to know your mm. horses better, sometimes they'll go, I'll do it, but I'm not yes, really so no into it. And then I go, okay, how about, and then I, how about we go just at a walk? gentle trot Mm. for about you know a short period of time and we come back how about we don't overdo it Mm. and then they come and pick me up but when they're done they tell me they're Mm. done and I stop yeah 
I never, because if I push that limit, Mm. I lose their trust. It's no different than our relationships with our spouses, our children, Mm. our best friends. It's no different. If I come over to your house because you invite me for supper and I stay for a week, (laughs) it's no different. It's respect. And that is what's difficult because as humans, we see other living beings, animals, plants, as lower than us. We're the superior smart kind, right? Guess what? We're not. We're not. We're not. Mm. We're the only animal that does to each other what we do. So I think that was, that's, that's the important element there is is your mindset Mm. our mindset and that was the difficult part for me yeah to embrace it a hundred percent i'd slip back yeah into the traditional or to the well you know that's enough of this we're going to do but i correct myself and it takes a bit of time so did you ever consider um that writing wasn't part of it that that writing was like did you really because I ask that because I examine my intention about that all the time it's really important to me to know why for me that's that I want why why do I even want to to be simple about it you know like because it's still yeah yeah. did you did you yes I did I did I did and I think um it was it was such a even on the ground it was such a process of, of revelations mm. because on the ground was the whole, we're establishing a pure relationship. We're establishing rules, mm. not in my language, in, in the horse mm. language, in what they want from me. We're establishing that. And I, w- I love to ride. Mm. That's why we have horses, you <laughs> yeah. know, and I wanted to, but at that point, I was prepared when I asked the question, is it okay for us to ride you? Mm. I was prepared to accept Mm. any answer, no questions asked. If I'm asking you if you like dogs, if you say no, it's no. I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise, right? I asked them, is it okay to ride you? And they said, yes, but. I says, okay, show me how. Mm. What do you need from us? What is it that you don't like about riding? Mm. And actually, we ride horses all wrong. You don't pull the head to the right to turn right. They're bananas. They don't. They, you don't. You throw them completely off balance. You, you know. Mm. <laughs> and again, in in my book, I do describe yeah. everything I say. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's backed up, yeah. and I teach you how to do it. Yeah. But um, it's it. So I was really happy to hear yes yeah and i was willing to to learn how Mm. tell me how tell me what it is we're doing wrong how can i ride you and and feel happy and safe Mm. and know when you want to stop and know when something's wrong yeah and again it's magical Mm. it's really fantastic so one little anecdote on uh, angelica um she is the first daughter, she's the one that found me and became my, my horse after mom died. So they were in a field, uh, a fairly large uh, place where I was, and there was a creek okay. that runs through the field. They were on the other side of the creek. So I I go to the top of the hill. I go, and they were far. So I walk all the way down. I have Angelica and I, I jump on bareback and I have to go back to the barn mm. because I have a student coming and... Um, I always give myself lots of time, but still. So I look at, and I thought, I'll just jump over the creek. And then I look at the creek and it was very low and the banks were very high. Okay. And it was a, a big jump. Yeah. So I, I thought the front legs would, will clear, the back may not, yeah. and it's a high bank. I don't want to do it this way. So I get on her back and I, I ask her, take me to the barn. What way would you go? Do we go all the way up the long way, which was to my left? I had to go all the way up the stream. Yeah. And I said, just, I said, but I had committed to trusting her. I asked her a question. 
So I let her go. She goes, right. <laughs> I asked. She goes, right. And walks down the stream, not very far. The stream came to a total flat. Walked across it and went up and took me to the bar. Yeah. I was a passenger. I asked nothing. Yeah. So they do hear. They hear our thoughts. Yeah. They hear if, if that's the relationship we want. They also answer. So if you don't hear, or when they tell you, please stop, my back hurts. Please stop, this saddle hurts. Please stop. They don't know how to ask you anymore. They move at the mounting block. They jiggle. They, they don't know. They try. They're, they're very kind. Yeah. Really They're not out to get us. No. And then they get to a point, the pain is so bad. Mm. They go, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. But they try and try and try and you get on anyway and somebody holds the horse. Yeah. So you can jump on and, and then halfway through riding, they start bucking. How many times have I heard people say, my horse just started bucking out of the blue. Okay, it's not out of the blue. Your horse is tolerant and patient and praise him. He's been trying really hard to do what you ask without hurting you, but he can no longer take yeah. it. Whether it's physical pain or mental pain or, or, or fear, it's... Yeah. And that's why when they say, I can't. My mare, Angelica, actually, when she's about to be in heat, she'll get very sensitive um, just mm. where her ovaries are. Yeah. So before the hips, on her, she'll get sensitive yeah. not very comfortable yeah. those are the times when i'd and i discovered that because i'd ask her if i could get on and she'd take a step but it wasn't i'll do it but not for long no and then two three days later she's in heat mm. it, it's like a clock always so then i figured that out and i said ah we don't have to ride let's go for a walk we just go discover them sometimes i'd say show me your world <clears throat> and i follow her mm. around in a few what is she sniffing? What is she eating? What is she doing? Which herd member does she like the most? Who does she hang out with the most? You know? Yeah. It's, it's all a part of it, which I think we have completely, I, I, I'd like to say we've forgotten about it. I don't even think we ever knew. Yeah. We, we that's an interesting. Never back in history. Yeah. I, d I don't think we ever took the time. I'm, yeah. I would have, I would have said that. Them. Yeah, before actually, mm -hmm. oddly enough, I started this podcast because I I used to think and I used to say to people, like I don't feel like there's anyone else doing what I'm doing, and um, and then when I started doing this, I re I really I've discovered like all these people and they're all doing it in a different way, like subtle differences, but it's like amazing how many people. I mean they were talking about <laughs> probably less than one percent of all horse people but it is it seeds you know there are yes and I think maybe there always has been because it's there in popular culture like look at the black stallion that's really romantic for us that idea of that connection of the child and the stallion yeah and like you know but that's how he did exactly. it exactly right? so it's like i think it's there it's just we an avatar the film you know i haven't watched that for a while so i need to watch it again but, <laughs> but you know just this idea of true reciprocity like like that there is a relationship a real yeah. relationship i think it's just that we we're just so heavily conditioned a lot of the time if we uh, here in Canada, well, the natives are such yeah. uh, a teacher for me, yeah. and I've had an opportunity to, to 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 chat with them and be. They are horse people. They are the true mm, horse people. Absolutely. A horse is actually their their spirit, a spirit animal, and um, for them, it's you don't you don't need any of that. Mm. They used a war bridle, which was simply um, a rope around the bottom of um, the, the, the bottom of the jaw mm. and it, it wasn't even for pulling or anything when they came back from a hunt or the horses were never in paddocks or no. because they believed if the horse stays with me it's because it's that's what the horse wants but I'm going to let him have the choice to stay with me or not 
And I find that is absolutely beautiful. And it was in some cultures, when the warrior died in battle, they would actually kill the horse and bury them together because they believed their soul was one. So, but it's such a small voice in our history that it was quickly forgotten or, over, you know, or uh, yeah, overly pushed aside. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. And I think now that is coming back. Yeah. We've tried everything. We've done everything. And still not working. Yeah. Do you think that we and can I... awaken others? I mean, I think we can inspire others. Yes. I think definitely. But I think possibly only by being inspired ourselves. and Because this is, yeah, this is something that I kind of... I've I less and less um that I'm interested in persuading people put it that way like yeah although maybe I could say well I'm just hiding in my own kind of you know in my herd and just you know we <laughs> we're just together and we're just like we love what we do and I don't like have to see that much outside of it so I really appreciate and I really um, applaud the people who are kind of on the front line and, you know, going there. And But I just, yeah, I don't know. I think people kind of, how how do you feel that they are convinced, like, that they change their mind? Do you think it's just something inside of them that changes? So... I, I, I did the, I do this as a business. Yeah. It's not the only thing I do because there are so little people. Mm. So the book sure. is out there. Um, you know, it's available on Amazon. Yeah. I'm always available. People buy my book and they're, they, they contact me via email. I'm always happy yeah. to help. I do video conferences, uh, clinics, things like that. Mm. But I, I thought, Whoa, this is fantastic and it works. It's a hundred percent guarantee it works. Mm. So why isn't everybody doing it? Why is my business not, you know, who? Yeah. <laughs> That's because and and I again talk to the horses. What can I do? I created the relationship riding bitless bridle, which has no pressure because a lot of people think bitless, you know, hackamores and all that. Ah, they're fine. There's no bit. Mm. And now they create pain. So I created tools mm. and I asked the horses, what can I do more? I wrote the book. I created the tools. Mm. I'm actually writing some more books now. And I was told, lead by example. So you do it. You show people what you're doing. And if they're ready, so they will take the leap. They got to be ready. And that we can't force that. We can't teach that. So the only thing, my advice to you would be that. Mm. Lead by example. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. And your, the horses will create the environments. And, and you never know who's going to be watching mm. you and going, yeah. whoa, I want that. Yeah. I want that. When I do clinics and all that, Never bring my horses. No. I never, never. I, I can be anywhere. I can, when I go give a clinic, I just grab my suitcase and I'm off. I don't need anything. No. And the reason I don't bring my horses is because I've had a relationship with my horses like this for over 20 years mm -hmm. for some of them. And they know I hear. They know I listen. Mm -hmm. And if I was to bring one of my horses to a clinic... I can't show yeah. like the ground exercises, the six ground exercises. Mine know perfectly well what we're doing and what the language is. And because it's the, the, the ground exercises are all based on horse behavior, yeah. how they interact with each other, all of them. So if we can act the same way that they act with each other, yeah. then they'll go, oh, okay, well, yeah. maybe we can communicate here. Yeah. You're not that different. So I, would, I, I wouldn't bring them. So I'd go some to a clinic and of course people bring their horses that have issues. Yeah. And within a few minutes, the horse is okay. Mm. They go, what happened here? <laughs> I say, that's what you can get. Mm. But you have to be in 
It has nothing to do with the horse. Yeah. I don't care how, what the training is, what the age is, what the behavior is. Mm. There are always exceptions. It can be medical or, or mental. I've, I have come across uh, a horse that had um, some, some mental difficulties mm. and it happens, yeah. you know, so we can recognize that. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, a horse that, that is physically well mm. and healthy and mentally well. And so that was my best way mm. to lead by yeah. example. Yes. And it does. I think just doing that work changes the energy. It changes mm -hmm. the vibrational quality of things. So even if it's not on the level of being seen in, you know, cognitively. But yes. Yeah, it's still. You might notice once you change your mindset mm. and you are, and you may have noticed this now. When you approach horses, they stop and look at you. Mm. They know that you know. Yeah. Yes, because it's all on that. Does that, that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It's on that they root know level. Because you have the energy, you have the understanding, and you're willing to be with them on the same level. Mm. Yeah. I was at a horse race yesterday, and they were bringing the horses to the fence so you could pet them. Not, not the racers, but the quarter horses with all their tons of tack yeah. on and, and the, the one horse stopped and he wasn't at in front of me but he just stopped and kept staring at me <laughs> and I mentally said hi yeah yeah I hear you I'm part of your game yeah. and you you probably realize that too when you approach horses even if you don't know them mm. there's something that is like hey do you want to connect yeah some kind of yeah, you pick it up. So do you find that um, some horses or all horses take some, if they haven't had choices from their people or their guardian, if, that they take a, a, a while to realize that they have a choice? Like there's a certain period of time. Yeah, for trust. That. Yeah. It, it's trust. Yeah. Yes. And um, there's no time stamp on that. No. Like if somebody would bring me their broken horse mm. to fix, yeah. they'd say, can you know, give me a month or two? I'd say, no way. Give me a year. A minute. A year. <laughs> a minute. Yeah. yeah. Because I want the, in, in nature, <clears throat> a horse goes through, all, here it's four seasons. Mm. Sometimes <laughs> we go through the seasons. A horse needs to know that there's food, water, safety, shelter mm. throughout the, all of the seasons in order to feel a trust, to feel comfortable. It doesn't necessarily take a year, mm. but I've had horses that it has. Yeah. And at that one-year mark, where they run with my herd, I never segregate. Mm, no, the, no. The, they all go, because who do they need? help and comfort from not me exactly. the herd yeah it's so true the herd yeah. and because my herd is in in a way that there's a lot of space they have food water shelter they have everything they need they feel safe then they can really act like a horse yeah. and do their the role in the herd as as a horse yeah. so when i bring a horse in yeah they'll do their pecking order and which changes yeah. and they do what they need to do to feel safe and happy and comfortable. When people say, I can't put my horse with other horses because they kick each other and all that. Okay, that's not the problem. The problem is lack of space. Mm. If horses are on in a big paddock and there's two, two or three of them and they know there's food, they get so much food a day, mm. you each get your portion, if it's water and everything, bring another horse in, what are they going to go? Whoa. Yeah. I'm not sharing my food with you. I get enough yeah. for me. So that's where the problems start. It's not that, oh, he's a bad horse and I can't put him with anyone. Yeah. No, that's not, that's not no. where the issue is. So when I would bring in a horse, put him with my herd, I let them be. Let my horses tell them mm. we're good. That's so healing. We're good. We've got food. Yeah. We've got shelter. We've got water. We're good. And then when I go into the herd... I'm interacting with my horses, imprinting. Mm. They are telling the new one, she's good. Yeah. She's fine. She's one of us. 
that's in printing. It's not touching and sacking with plastic bags, and that's not imprinting. No. Imprinting is the other horse is telling them she looks different, mm. but she's good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's who you are, isn't and it? And yes, there are horses that it can take a week, two weeks, a month, and other horses it can take up to a year. Yeah, absolutely. It depends. And it's their prerogative. Yeah. We cannot possibly understand how they've been hurt and on what level. No. And like humans, some can take a lot and some can't. Yeah. There's a reason why quarter horses are so popular. Because they can take a lot. <laughs> they can take they a are lot. incredible. Arabians so. and Andalusians are like, oh, no, those are not, Absolutely. you know, they're hot horses. No, they're sensitive mm. horses. They can't take as much. Yeah. <laughs>